Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. So I've been getting lately comments on my videos requesting to make a video about expenses here in Montreal as an international student. So I finally decided to do it. I really hope it helps you guys and it answers your questions. If ever you feel like some things are not well explained or if you need further clarification, please let me know, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you if I can. So I prepared a whole thing right here just to make sure that I cover everything and let this video be full of useful information that can actually help you. I might maybe really go into details concerning some subjects, but it's just because I wish that I had someone to tell me all of these things before coming here for that reason i really think it's important for me to highlight all these aspects and to cover all of these topics i'm going to be talking about tuition fees in concordia and in mcgill and then as the second topic i'm going to be talking about housing then groceries outings and finally transportation just wanted to mention one last thing before diving in I apologize in advance if the numbers are not very accurate, but they should be more or less accurate. For tuition fees, there's something really important you need to know. It varies from major to major, so I won't be able to give you an accurate number. But what I can tell you is that BCom, for example, in Concordia is one of the most expensive majors. From 12k to 14, 15k per semester. Uh, so it's more expensive than, for example, Bachelor of Arts or Science. Arts and Science, according to Concordia's website, is around 20k per year. You have to be careful because I did not pay attention to this when I first applied to Concordia. So when they say 20k per year, they mean fall semester and winter semester. So summer semester is not taken under consideration. So while making your calculations, you need to take into account that if you take summer courses, you it's going to be more than 20k per year. So now for McGill, the numbers are kind of scary, but I mean, it's McGill. Uh, so for example, a BCom major in McGill for international students is at least 50k per year, I would say. But of course, arts is less expensive. I think it can go around 18k to I'm not sure. You guys should consult the fee calculator on their website. But what I know is the BCom major at McGill for international students is kind of expensive. Uh, but I mean, it's obviously all worth it. Now I'm going to talk about books, ebooks, access codes, and I'm going to give you a tip. So first of all, whenever you, like when you are in uni, get into Facebook groups they really help, they're so useful because people post old books they want to sell so you can buy your books second hand which is like way cheaper than buying them from the bookstore they're kind of like honestly overpriced at the bookstore and sometimes you can even find them online so look before buying access codes unfortunately there's nothing much you can do but to buy the code and these codes are very expensive they go from $80 to $110 uh, per access code. So sometimes if you take four courses, like in my case, first semester I took five courses and two of them, I think if I'm not mistaken, had access codes. So this was like $200 gone on access codes but I mean you really need these access codes because um, your homework is going to be on them your assignments going to be on them everything's going to be graded as well so you need to really get the access code but sometimes you have course who do not need who do not require access codes which is great and if it's the case then I highly encourage you to get into Facebook groups ask if anyone is selling and see if you can get like a second hand uh, book. Now on to the second topic, housing. 
I'm going to be talking about dorms and apartments. I'll first start with dorms. So Concordia dorms are less, less expensive than McGill dorms. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, if you want a big room, not a big room, I mean a room, a, a kind of a gener generously spacious room with your own sink. So yes, one thing you should know in Concordia dorms, bathrooms are shared. But what you can uh, apply for is a room with a sink. This actually helps. Uh, but if you want, if you want a room with a sink, you guys have to apply ASAP. Like first come, first serve basis. It's nine hundred per month for a large single room with meal plan included. McGill dorms, on the other hand, can go up to thirteen k per month with meal plan included if I'm not mistaken. I am not so sure about that. Double check on that, but I suppose meal plan is included. Now for apartments, so prices can really vary depending on the area you're looking to live in. So for example, in downtown, if you wanna live on your own, I would say it's kind of expensive than like living with someone, of course. So a single bedroom here in downtown could could be around 1200 and 1300 a month but if you are willing to live with a roommate it's less expensive honestly it's not too bad compared to other cities in canada like for example toronto is super 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 expensive rent is super expensive over there uh so here it's kind of it's it's not too bad honestly for the space you get it's kind of worth it if you really want to be in downtown close to uni now if your budget is around 800 to like 900 a month and if you want to live on your own then you guys should probably start looking outside of downtown but if you want to live like 10 minutes away from downtown walking distance and you are willing to live with like three to four people, you guys can actually find really good apartments at like 600 to 700 per person per month. And finally, one last thing you need to know for apartments, depending on your lease, your apartment could be furnished or not, uh, or could offer electricity. Water here is inclusive everywhere, it's free. Uh, electricity depends on the building and on your lease. So the electricity depends on your lease, but even if your lease does not cover electricity, it's not too expensive, honestly. Like the bill comes in every three months, I would say. And if the ACs are on and heaters are on, the bill could be like around 100 per three months. But when nothing is on, the bill is roughly like $40 for three months, so that's really nothing. It's very affordable. For Wi-Fi, some of the apartments do offer Wi-Fi like included in your lease, but usually the Wi-Fi kinda sucks. So in most cases, you just get your own Wi-Fi from Videotron, Bell, or Rogers. Um, I recommend Videotron, it's really good my wi-fi is videotron like we never had any problems with them since i'm talking about uh, these companies i might as well mention phone bills as well so phone bills here are very different than from where i lived in uh, i lived in the uae and i would just like buy a card and charge it and whenever it's done just buy another one here it's per month and you can Pick any bundle you want. If you want 3G, then you can get unlimited calls. You get, in, in, in either case here, you get unlimited calls, texts, uh, regardless of the bundle you took. For example, you can get uh, unlimited calls, text for 15 per month. Um, or you can get 2 GBs, unlimited calls, unlimited text for like 35 per month. So like the max it can go at is 55 per month, but that's like if you get 10K of GB. So I'm on the third topic I want to cover for this video, grocery shopping. It really depends on what you buy, where you're gonna buy it from. So for example, I go to Supermarché PA. There's Provigo as well and IGA, but I prefer uh, Supermarché PA or IGA. I find the prices over there are less, are, are more affordable than at Provigo. Provigo may be sometimes overpriced. So yeah, it depends on what you buy, what you look, what you're looking for. But I would say you should put 
aside at least 300 to like 350 dollars per month for grocery shopping on its own if you're the kind of person that really likes to go out like every week clubbing bars restaurants i would say you need to at least put aside a good 250 300 no okay i'll say 200 250 <laughs> let's just stick to that per month for all of this and also one thing you really need to know and not forget when you pay for your bill you guys have to add 30% on your bill because you're paying for tips and taxes so taxes are 15% tips you can honestly you don't want to put tips don't put tips you want to put more than 15 you can but normally if you put less than 15% for tips it is really mal vu here in Montreal because the tipping culture is very present here in Canada if you guys want to know more about the tipping culture my friend wrote an article I'm going to put the link in my description down below it's very interesting if you guys want to know more about tipping here in uh, Canada I really recommend you read his article for the last topic I want to cover for this video is transportation so here you have something called the opus card opus card is the card you use and charge every month to be able to use the stm the metro or the bus um here in montreal in laval for example it's stl metro fees vary from province to from a province to another but here in montreal for students it's i think if i'm not mistaken 52 dollars each year the prices go up by a bit honestly 52 dollars is really good you guys also get the student discount because normally it's more than that and also something i forgot to mention earlier sometimes like depending on the place and depending on the day and time you of the day you can get 10 percent to 20 percent discount in like some restaurants if you decide not to pay 52 dollars every month for your opus card you can just buy like a card a normal pass at like 3.5 for one way or if you want two ways it's 6.5 and if you want to get it for 24 hours it's 10 dollars which i think is very affordable and transportation here is honestly very easy in my case i live in downtown and i'm super close to my uni so i don't have the opus card but whenever i want to go outside of downtown i do buy the normal stm card and uh, yeah so i would say i don't put a lot on transportation per month but if you have the opus card then 52 per month if you don't then i'm pretty sure it's gonna be less like maybe 20 per month for transportation for public transportation that's like not uber so guys this is it for my video i really hope you guys found it useful and informative if you guys have any questions please 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 do not hesitate to contact me i will be really more than happy to help in any way possible